Hello YouTube and welcome to Atheist Minority. Before I get started today, I just want to give a big thank you to all of you. At the time of this recording, I am really close to hitting 5,000 subscribers on my YouTube channel and I'm pretty excited about that. It is thanks to you and all of the support that you've given me that has allowed me to make it this far with this channel. When I started it, I really couldn't have imagined the level of support that I would get from you guys. And I want you to know that I appreciate each and every one of you. Atheist Minority has the best subscribers on YouTube. You guys are a really intelligent and respectful group. You leave insightful comments on the videos and I just want you to know that I'm really honored by your support. I'm really looking forward to growing this channel with your continued support. And I just want you to know, I think you guys are awesome. So without further ado, let's just get started. We all know the Bible claims to be the inspired word of God, inerrant and infallible. In a couple of my previous videos, I've mentioned the inconsistencies and contradictions that can be found in the New Testament. And some of you have even asked that I go into a little bit more detail about that. So I thought it would be a good idea to start a video series on the Gospels of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Christians, you accept Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior because you believe that his first coming fulfilled several Old Testament prophecies. Therefore, what the New Testament has to say about Jesus Christ is really central to your faith. So, I would think that these accounts would agree with one another. Well, let's take a look. Our first lesson will cover the birth of Jesus Christ. Let's start with the genealogy of Joseph, Jesus' father. Old Testament prophecies state, that the Messiah will be a direct descendant of King David. The only two Gospels that mention the lineage of Jesus are Matthew and Luke. Matthew starts with Abraham and moves forward through David to Joseph. Luke, on the other hand, starts with Joseph and moves backwards all the way to God. Now, the two genealogies are pretty similar all the way up until David. At this point, they wildly diverge. This is because Matthew traces Joseph from David's son Solomon, whereas Luke traces Joseph from David's son Nathan. In Matthew chapter 1 verses 15 and 16, it's stated that Joseph's great-grandfather is Eleazar. His grandfather is Methan and his father is Jacob. But in Luke chapter 3 verses 23 and 24, Jacob's great-grandfather is listed as Levi, his grandfather is Mathot, and his father is Heli. These are two completely different lines to David. Not only that, but Matthew claims 28 generations separating King David from Jesus Christ. When you count the names given in Luke, the genealogy comes to 41 generations for that same period of time. Now, I'm not going to tell you what I think is the reason for such a glaring contradiction. I'll just let you do your own research and decide for yourself. And you know, if Jesus was born of a virgin, why is there all this effort to link him to King David through Joseph anyway, who supposedly isn't even a blood relative? That's probably another video topic altogether. Next, we'll talk about Jesus' birthday. Matthew chapter 2 verse 1 states that Jesus was born during the reign of Herod the Great. Luke chapter 2 verses 1 and 2 says that Jesus was born during the time of the worldwide census when Quirinius was governor of Syria. Now here's the problem. That census took place in the years 6 or 7 AD. That's a full 10 years after the death of King Herod in the spring of 4 BC. And there are other logistical and historical issues with this supposed empire-wide census, which probably never happened in the first place. But that's another video topic too. Next, Jesus' birthplace. Old Testament prophecy foretells the birth of a great king of Jews in Bethlehem. In this case, 
Matthew and Luke both have Jesus Christ being born in Bethlehem. However, the circumstances around the birth are not the same. Matthew chapter 2 doesn't start off by telling us anything about where Mary and Joseph lived before Jesus was born. However, when the author mentions Jesus' birth occurring in Bethlehem, there is no account of Mary and Joseph having to travel anywhere to get there. We won't make any assumptions about that, though. We'll, we'll just leave that alone. After Jesus was born, his family fled to Egypt to avoid the possibility of Jesus being caught and murdered by King Herod. When it was finally safe to return to Judea, they were afraid to do so, and they decided to settle in Nazareth. So now let's look at Luke, chapter 2. According to this biblical account, Mary and Joseph already lived in Nazareth. Caesar Augustus enacted an empire-wide census that required everyone to travel to their place of birth to register. So Joseph traveled to Bethlehem to fulfill his obligation and he took his very pregnant fiancée Mary along with him. While they were in Bethlehem, Mary went into labor and gave birth. Then only after Jesus' circumcision and purification did they return to Nazareth. The book of Luke has no mention of the flight to Egypt, nor the slaughter of the innocents. I wonder why not. You know, these three points are just the tip of the iceberg, and that's why I've decided to make this a series, because there are a lot more contradictions and inconsistencies that can be found in the Gospels. Each one of the three points in this video could be examined much more in depth and we could go into a lot more detail about every single one of these. But I wanted to stick to looking at only what the Bible clearly says on each of these topics and nothing else. Studying outside sources concerning the translation of some of these biblical passages as well as the recorded historical events from the same period of time bring even more questions to light. But that's not the goal of this particular video. We examine the biblical passages only, and that alone is enough to raise some serious concerns. This time around, we didn't touch on Mark or John, and the reason why is because the authors of those books were smart enough to not attempt to reconcile Old Testament prophecies concerning the birth of Jesus Christ in their accounts. But believe me, as this series progresses, those books will have plenty of time in the spotlight. The central idea of Christianity is that Jesus Christ is your Messiah. The Holy Bible, with the Old Testament and the New Testament put together as a coherent whole, is your proof. If he didn't fulfill Old Testament prophecy, that makes the whole of Christianity false. So, why do you think that Matthew and Luke tell such widely varied accounts. And most importantly, are you okay with that? Thanks for watching. Peace.